Hello comrades, it's your friend Horacio Zaglimbia, aka the baby communist, and I'm here on the set of the Quick Take, and joining me is no one. No one has joined me today. Why? I don't know. I've called millions of people. All my friends have not have left. They don't want to be my friends anymore. I need people. Why doesn't anybody want to talk to me anymore? I just No, 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 no. You you tell Tom Hanks he rides coach, I ride first class. Hey, I just got back from the line. Damn! <laughs> oh my god, you're back! Okay. You don't know how it's been without you. Yeah, no, I've seen, trust me. And uh, our executive producer flew me out here to do damage control on the male friend brand, which oh. you and Matt have both effectively destroyed and not naming any other names because it's a little embarrassing, but. Uh, flew you out here with what money? Uh, OUTV funds. We would like some of that. Yeah, that's. Uh, Look at our set, <laughs> our paltry set, and you're spending it on what? Talent. Well, I'm glad you're back. We've had a revolving door of like mediocre talent. I've been, I've been lacking, and. Uh, I can see that. I mean, uh, you better just let me take the lead on this show because in. you know I'm. I've been living in Hollywood. That's where we make movies. Why are you so mean right talk now? Talk about them on your little bullshit show here. You were nicer before you left. <laughs> One moment, uh, LA business. Theme song. My stocks are up, and my Bitcoin. Wow, thank you very much. Sorry about that, Ben. My uh, dude in LA. Big man now, huh? Yeah, pretty much. So as uh, Horatio failed to mention, as he is a garbage host, we are uh, going to be doing our Halloween special today. We're going to be reviewing uh, Friday the 13th, Halloween, and Nightmare on Elm Street. And this is the Halloween special for the quick take. Not yes. the take, different property. It's not an important distinction at all, because if you're wa watching at all, I'm honestly surprised. I think we're going to just go through and review each one separately and then maybe do a little battle royale at the end find Absolutely. out who's the best slasher yeah. but i thought you know we could just you know maybe oh, have God. some popcorn you know like this is like kind of a little traditional movie snack we have out in la you know okay. so let's rip this open oh shit. <laughs> oh my god dude i got popcorn all over my pants <laughs> so, <laughs> i gotta i gotta get those cleaned immediately uh, Noah, could you grab those, toss them right in the washer? Because, uh, let's take a quick edit break while we wash my pants. Well, it won't hurt you to go out of them, for God's sake. No, no, I just made a mess of myself. I gotta call you back. Oh, yuck! Lindsay, I need a rope! Welcome back to The Take. Uh, so I think we're gonna just go in sequential order. It starts with uh, Halloween 1978. A lot of people consider this to be the godfather of slasher movies, and it did start a slasher movie boom, but uh, I would consider the godfather Psycho, of course. And there are many references to Psycho in Halloween. Did there you catch are. any? No, I don't, I guess not. Well, you don't know from Shinole, do you, brother? I guess not. <laughs> well, for one thing, uh, Sam Loomis, named after Marion Crane's boyfriend in Psycho, for another, uh, f***ing, f***ing Jamie Lee Curtis, daughter of Janet Lee. Oh. This was like one of the first movies that had an antagonist who was just like pure evil, yeah. no motivation. That's what yeah. kind of like sets it apart, I think. What was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil. I really enjoyed the film. Um, I hate slashers, oh. and I didn't think I was going to like any of these films, especially Halloween, since I knew it was straight up the, you know, the slasher movie. But I watched it and I was... Wait, this was a first time watch for you? I've seen it in bits and pieces throughout oh. my childhood on cable, so I'm sure a lot of it was edited okay. out. But yeah, this was my first real adult watch through of this movie and I was blown away. What about all these, like all these movies? Were these uh, all all of them were all pretty much, I've seen them wow. in bits and pieces, not all the way through as a, as a real human adult. You really don't know from Shinola. No, I don't. Stop saying that! Yeah, well, I think I saw this movie a little, maybe too late in life, where, you know, I'd seen it aped a million times. Yes. And it wasn't scary to me, but I've gained a much more of an appreciation for it. It's shot really well, shot by Dean Cundey, who did like Jurassic Park and a ton of Spielberg yeah. and Robert Zemeckis movies. So. A, lot of pe a lot of movies drew inspiration from it, and seeing it now for the first time, Made me appreciate yeah, it more. Impactful. No, it actually was oh. more impactful because I was looking for that. 
And okay. it's a 1978 movie, and it really stands the test of time, in my opinion. I'm surprised because you're typically, whenever we review movies, you're always interested in like the origins of the characters, and this mm -hmm. movie leaves them a completely blank slate, which you normally hate. But I'm okay with this because th they do give you the origin of Michael Myers. He's just, as a kid, he snapped, killed his first babysitter, and then... His sister, actually. Right, but she was technically his babysitter at the time. No. But anyway, killed his sister and then sure. was institutionalized for the rest of his life. And I thought that was it. That's all I needed. Yeah, and the sequels, they really try and like get into his backstory. They like do this link where he ends up being Lars Strode's brother and stuff. Mm -hmm. And all that's so unnecessary. And the remake, most recent one with David Gordon Green, I think they had the right idea. Yeah. Bringing it back to just as simple as possible. He's just this anomaly. He's just this like space almost. Yeah. Well, obviously, we got to talk about the score. The John score was Carpenter. incredible. Yes. Out of all of these, this was the best score. Yeah, honestly, the score for Nightmare and Friday, it's just like bombastic noise. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, I agree. I didn't like the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, score because it was just way too electronica slash 80s. Something I really like about Halloween too, and all these movies, I guess, maybe not as much Nightmare on Elm Street, is just the extreme low budget, you know? Yeah. I, kinda, I think it almost makes it more scary because it's like, you feel like anything could happen and whereas like the new Halloween, you got all these stage shots perfectly, perfectly yeah. lit and everything, perfectly composed and I, I like it a little more rough around the edges. It feels like real. Movies. Yeah. It feels very real. It feels like this guy's in our neighborhood killing people. This was like a turn because well, I guess Psycho was the main turn where horror movies used to be more like folklore about like werewolves and vampires and stuff and then Psycho brought it into the shower it's like this could happen to you and that's what makes Halloween scary as well is that it's just set in a normal neighborhood South Pasadena shot in LA. Yeah Haddonfield <laughs> Illinois. Yes. This movie kind of established the conventions of the slasher and a lot of people kind of say they like misconstrue the message of this movie, how um, Lori didn't get killed because she's a virgin, but... There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. For instance, number one, you can never have sex. <laughs> John Carpenter's come out and said like, oh no, she just didn't get killed because she was an intelligent person, yeah. paying attention, being observant, she made because she's silent. Yeah. yeah. And as these movies go on, like the copycats like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, people started to accuse it of, and I feel like we talk about this every time, because <laughs> we're always talking about old movies, but people are starting to accuse them of being misogynistic. And, mm -hmm. and all of these films are thrillers featuring extreme violence directed at young women. To put it bluntly, what you see in most of these films is a lot of teenage girls being raped or stabbed to death, usually both. This is a depressing development in American movies. <laughs> this is coming from a male perspective, so it's not as... Yikes. Take it with a grain of salt. But of I, salt. Always, I would think that these movies would be empowering to women, like in, especially Jamie Lee Curtis's role. I would say uh, Halloween and A Nightmare on Elm Street. Not so much Friday? Not so much Friday the 13th because... Well, there's still a final girl in there. There is, but she doesn't do much for her own situation. Well, let's uh, transition right into it then, because that's the next movie, 1980. This is a totally a copycat franchise. Um, Didn't the director actually come out and say that he was just trying to make Halloween? <laughs> yeah, I think so. What is it about this movie that caused it to catch on, do you think? I really, I mean, I think it's just, at the time, it was just another slasher at, in the right place at the right time. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, I'm done with this, so could someone take this from me? What's the cameraman's name? <laughs> That's Noah. Noah, do whatever with that. You can't treat you can't treat my people like that. Oh, oh. This is not fucking LA. That's I will cut that's you. How we do it anyway, All right, man. I will fucking cut you. I'm doing you a favor by being here. I'm just gonna hold on to this. Yeah, honestly, Friday the Thirteenth. The first movie's a little it's a little rough around the edges to start with. I'll I'll give you that. But it's it's probably my favorite in terms of just the franchises and what they became. Friday the Thirteenth, I think, is my favorite because I think it indulges the most in just the sex, the violence, the creative kills, mm -hmm. and that's really all the only place you can go. I mean, Halloween pretty much did it perfectly out the gate, mm -hmm. and at this point, all you can do is have fun with it and indulge. See, I, I thought the premise of Friday the Thirteenth was okay, but um, I just think the execution could have been a lot better. I like handheld camera when it comes to slashers and stuff because it puts you in the perspective of the killer. But a lot of the shots that were really handheld and really shaky and you're like, oh, is this the killer's perspective? And it turns out, no, that was just that mm, shot that they camera. used. So, <laughs> exactly. And it just felt very cheap, the movie Friday the 13th. It felt like- I like, like that about it. See, I don't like that I about it. I, Cause like, I think there's a way to do that, like Evil Dead with Bruce Campbell. But then on the flip side, 
you have this, and I, uh, I think that it just feels too cheap. Uh, talking about Psycho as well, there are some allusions to Psycho in this as well. Uh, you got the hitchhiker character who was killed halfway through. That well, exactly bothered me too. Way. That <laughs> bothered me too because we started off with her and she never even made it to Camp Crystal Lake, and yeah. I didn't like that. Actually, when I was in LA, I did. A, I went to a Q and A. In LA, <laughs> shut up. We don't care. I went to a Q and A with the uh, hitchhiker, and she was uh, talking. I got some insider information on that scene, and uh, I'll share it with you now. A little. Hollywood insider story. Why do you have to frame it? Why can't you just say it? <laughs> it was uh, Tom Savini's uh, assistant was the one driving the car when oh. she got murdered. Who's Tom Savini? Who's Tom Savini? This guy's on a movie review show. He is the MVP of Friday the 13th. He's the one that did all the makeup oh. effects. He did the makeup effects. He's a legend in the makeup effects community. Those were cool. I did enjoy the kills in this. I thought the kills in Friday the 13th yeah. were well done. Oh, best practically. Kill. I would think the best kill in Friday the 13th is watching Kevin Bacon get an arrow jammed up through his throat. Ah. Partially because it's Kevin Bacon, so that was kind of cool. And also because the mom had to be under the bed for a long time during that lovemaking, and she just persisted, so that was impressive. The fortitude, the mental and physical fortitude of waiting under that bed as Kevin Bacon <laughs> plowed his girlfriend was... But yeah, Kevin Bacon's in this movie, mm -hmm. and he doesn't really stand out at all to me. Uh, it's kind of interesting, yeah. Both, all three of these movies had A-list actors start their careers. Yeah. Jamie Lee, Kevin Bacon, Johnny Depp. Exactly. The uh, setting of Friday the 13th was probably my favorite out of all. Yeah, of I like the atmosphere, the camp, and the rain. And, and the, uh, who's in the dark, and Oh, yes, all and that. also the, t the twist is kind of cool, you know? where it's the mom. It's the reverse yeah. of Psycho. Exactly. And so this is your first time seeing it and you didn't know that Jason wasn't the killer. In the depths of my brain, I had known that, but I had forgotten uh, it. Okay. And then it was revealed and I was like, oh yeah. And I mean, I expected to see Jason in a hockey mask, yes. but it wasn't him. And I've heard he's not even in uh, a in part, hockey mask in the second one. Part two is actually my favorite as my favorite kill. It's like kid in a wheelchair. He gets it right in the face. Totally undeserved. The Why disabled that? person? <laughs> yes. He's an indiscriminate killer. Wow. <laughs> and You're he has a monster. the best freeze frame in cinema history. <laughs> the, the hockey mask mm -hmm. that Jason has and Michael Myers' mask were both just happy accidents. Really? It's a famous story that uh, Michael Myers' mask was a William Shatner mask that they spray painted yep. white and wide in the eye holes. Mm -hmm. And Jason was just like someone had a hockey mask in the trunk of their car. How fortuitous. I think those, yeah, happy accidents like are why they're so iconic because you couldn't plan something like that. And I think when getting now into Nightmare on Elm Street, transitioning smoothly wow. as a true host does nice. into our third movie, Robert England's Freddy Krueger is a little too over-designed. I agree yes, with that. Like, yes. I never found him scary. I never thought he looked like disgusting. Mm -hmm. He just looked like a Halloween mask to me. He's the weakest of the original killers. I liked the premise of this film a little bit more than the premise of the other films because like you've alluded to, I'm a big fan of like the supernatural aspects and like things of that nature. Yeah, I agree with you. I really think this the concept for this movie is actually the best of the three mm -hmm. and it's the most original, yes. but I think it's completely wasted. And every sequel, they never nail dreams. They, they don't establish the rules to this world at all. Like, it's really inconsistent yeah. like, when things are happening in the real world or when they're happening. It was very convoluted, know. the story You could of... do so many cool things with this, but like they always just return to this boiler room setting. And it's like, yeah. who has nightmares about boiler rooms? Well, that's where Freddy, that's his world. That's yeah. where he was killed by the I parents, guess, but it's so. just to like tie yourself to that when you have the world of dreams, you can do literally anything. They really do not make use of that at all. That's true. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. I hated the ending. I absolutely because with the blow up doll getting pulled through the window. Well, not just that, but the <laughs> whole everything that was uh, that happened around it. You know, we just uh, I forget her name, but the main protagonist. She was very bad. It's bright. She was not a great actress, no. but she won, and she beat him by realizing that the entire movie had been a dream up until that point, mm. and then she walked out of the bedroom, came out into the real world, yes. and Freddy was still there. I think they just wanted that one last jump scare at the end. Right, and I actually did read that the director, uh, John Carpenter. Wes no, Craven. Wes Craven. Jeez, even shit. cameraman was on that one. You're on my side. <laughs> He made you pick up his water! At least he knows his <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Wes Craven, the director, uh, wanted an ending that was happy, where she won and everything was over, but the studios wanted the potential for sequels, so uh, unfortunately they made them have Freddy still alive. That's all three s slasher franchises. That is, that so, is. There's others, but those are the uh, pillars of the slasher uh, genre. So uh, I guess we'll go well, you haven't seen any of the franchises, so we can't. We just got to go best movie. Yes. And best killer, I guess. Sure. I think the best movie, hands down, was Halloween. Is this like Halloween staple viewing for you now? I don't think so, but it's something that I'll come back to. It's a 1978 film, and now in 2018, I'm watching it alone at home in the dark, and it is kind of affecting me. You know, I am kind of like, ooh, I'm going to lock my bedroom door tonight yes. so that my cats don't break in and kill me. But yeah, I would say Halloween, hands down, out of all three of these, is the best. Then comes Nightmare on Elm Street, and then Friday the 13th. You know what? We gotta um, have like a sleepover night where we watch, binge all of the Friday the 13th movies. We'll play, uh, we'll play Strip Monopoly. You can always call it quits if you want to. Fat chance you're two steps from uh, Pacific Avenue and Skin City. Oh. Just have like a dude's night, dudes only. Damn. Strip Monopoly and... Uh... I, have, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> So for me, best franchise, Friday the 13th, best movie, Halloween, best killer, uh, Michael Myers. Yes. Yeah, I yeah, know. He's got the coolest look, I think. And yeah. he is very methodical. Yes. He knows what he's doing. Nick Castle, the first shape, the one I met in LA. Bet his movements. Are we done here? Well, did you have, I mean, this is our Halloween episode. Did you have any closing thoughts about Halloween? Anything you want to leave the audience with? Not really. Uh, don't put razor blades in your uh, candy that you're passing out um, or anthrax. Don't inject any kind of poison. Kids are our future, so uh, please don't um, murder or poison them. Well, just on the uh, sentiment of Halloween, I have a couple things I want to say. Okay. You know, I've been living out in LA and I, I watch your show sometimes. And, our uh, show? You watch yeah, our I, show? Yeah, I watch, watch, watch the quick take, wow. even when I'm not on. I'm honored that yeah. big and, uh, Daniel Brian Gordon from Los Angeles still Well, watches I don't know. Us. I just, I don't know if I like what I'm seeing all the time. Like, I think that you get so caught up in watching these stupid bullshit movies that you forget that there are people right in front of you. What people? Like, it's Halloween. Uh huh. It's, it's the one night of the year that we all we all smile a little easier. We all give a little more. For a couple hours out of the whole year, we are the people we always wished we would be. It's a miracle. It's really, it's sort of a miracle because it happens every Halloween. And if you waste that miracle, you're gonna burn for it. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. You do have to do something. You do have to get involved. There are people out there that are having trouble having their, making their miracles happen. You can go out, you can talk to these people, you can, you can give them an old blanket, you can say, here. You can make an old sandwich and say, oh, by the way, here. Everyone's got to have this miracle, not just the poor and the hungry, everybody. And if, and, if you, and if you give, then it can happen. Then it can happen to you. The miracle can happen to anyone. You won't be one of these bastards that says, oh, Halloween only comes once a year and it's a fraud. It's not. It's not. It can happen every day. You just gotta want it. And if you want it and you like it, you'll get greedy for it. You want it every day of your life, and it can happen. And it's gonna happen to me. I believe it now. Uh, and it's a good feeling. It's really, it's, it's better than I've felt in a long time. <sighs> Happy Halloween, everyone. Could you, could you step a little bit further that way? That was very passionate. I want to know where it's coming from. Is this your way of telling us you're homeless in LA? Do you need a sandwich? It's, it's not been going that great for me, actually. Oh. I've just been living. Well, follow us on Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all our social media sites. Bye. Yeah, could I actually stay at your place tonight? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> could I, no, I was just going to say, could I stay at your place tonight? No. Oh. Is this a real question? Uh, no.